Russia uses African cars in its offensive on Vovchansk in Ukraine. Russia deployed units of the African cars alongside regular Russian forces and Storm Z units during their offensive on Vovchansk in the northern Kharkiv region, according to the UK Ministry of Defence. The Russian Ministry of Defence's African Corps, created in December 2023, consists of more than 2,000 regular soldiers and officers, as well as experienced mercenaries, many of whom previously served with the Wagner Group. According to British intelligence, the African Corps units were likely previously deployed in Syria, Libya, Burkina Faso and Niger. The Russian Ministry of Defense almost certainly redeployed detachments from the Africa Corps to the Ukrainian border during April 2024 in preparation for this offensive. It is highly likely that Russia is reinforcing its war on Ukraine with resources previously assigned to Africa, the UK Ministry of Defense wrote. Recall Russia's economic, diplomatic and military interests in Africa have been increasing in the past few years. Since 2017, Russia has used Wagner as a low-cost strategy to increase its foothold in Africa. Wagner's former leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin, was Russia's main man in Africa. A month before he died in a plane crash on the 23rd of August 2023, Prigozhin was spotted at the Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg, indicating Moscow's use of the mercenary group for its military influence in Africa. After Prigozhin's death, President Vladimir Putin admitted his government had funded the paramilitary group. Russia's move to create the Africa Corps can be analysed from two possibly overlapping perspectives. First, by controlling Africa Corps, Moscow could be trying to avoid past mistakes. Wagner's autonomy and power led to a supremacy battle between Prigozhin and senior Russian defence officials, which boiled over into an unsuccessful insurrection that saw Wagner soldiers marching on Moscow in June 2023. Second, aligning Africa Corps operations with Russia's foreign policy, security interests and international commitments could be part of the country's long-term military strategy in Africa. Heavy rains hit the Brasilia at the end of April and continued into May, resulting in more than 160 confirmed fatalities and the worst flooding the country has seen for 80 years. Automotive suppliers remain inoperative and distribution networks continue to be disrupted. The key agricultural state of Rio Grande do Sul has been hit by an unprecedented climate disaster for the past three weeks, with cities and rural areas alike inundated by torrential rains that have left more than 161 people dead and some 100 missing. More than 15 centimeters of rain could fall over the weekend and will probably worsen flooding according to Bulletin from Brazil's National Meteorology Institute. It said there is also a high likelihood that winds will intensify and water levels rise in the Pedos Lagoon next to the state capital, Porto Alegre, and the surrounding area. Another 581,633 people are homeless, although not in shelters. In total, Rio Grande do Sul has 654,194 people out of their homes. It is the region's fourth extreme weather event in less than a year, a phenomenon scientists say is driven by climate change and also deforestation. There's a global component to climate change, and also a regional one, which is the loss of native vegetation. That increased the intensity of the floods, says biologist Eduardo Vales of Map Biomas, an organization that uses satellite images to track deforestation. More rain started coming down in Brazil's already flooded Rio Grande do Sul state, where many of those remaining are poor people with limited ability to move to less dangerous areas. According to the group, Rio Grande do Sul lost 22% of its native vegetation, or 3.6 million hectares, from 1985 to 2022. Native forests help ensure water permeates the soil, preventing it from accumulating on the surface, says Jacqueline Sordi a biologist and journalist based in the region who specializes in climate issues.